Hey, woman, mama, powerhouse, <laughs> whatever you feel like right now. I talked to probably about five women yesterday who are um, stretched too thin to a point that it's becoming uncomfortable. And when I say barely holding on, I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, whether you're trying to figure out half homeschooling, half working, um, dealing with kids who are really struggling, the number one diagnosis coming through for kids right now is anxiety. Like totally hurts my heart because a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 10-year-old, for them to feel that inside their body, inside their bones is really scary because um, it's what I've been talking about in my practice. Also, this is what they are deeming to be normal. Like this is what, this is how they think it's supposed to be. So if you feel like you're gripping onto this container or all you wanna do is get home and drink wine or escape from the shit show that is, it's not going away. And, and I think um, that's what's hurting a lot of people right now is the feeling that we don't know when this is going to end. So back in March, you could process logically. All right, this is going to be four weeks. This is going to be eight weeks. We can do it. By the time summer comes, everything's going to be better. By the time the fall comes, we're going to have sports again. All of the things that we've kind of talked ourselves into. And now we're starting to feel... Um, pretty depleted and not sure where we're going to get the energy from. So number one, being gentle with yourself, having grace, but not ever settling for less than ideal. Um, not ever settling for less than awesome. <laughs> so you're probably saying like, oh my gosh, what do I, what do I do? Where do I start? Well, this interesting conversation happened on Monday night and this gal was talking about a friend of hers who's really struggling with anxiety and depression and everything that goes with it. Um, you know, what I see go with it is sleep is interrupted. The brain is totally on crack. It's constantly going. It's in a state of dis-ease. It's worrying. It's, it doesn't stop. So when you're trying to go to bed, it continues to go. You wake up in the middle of the night feeling that like tummy twirl. And so they were having this conversation and um, my patient said, man, I, I think you need to see Dr. Tiffany. Well, it sounds like, um, so this gal said, well, I don't really have X, Y, Z because I'm taking something for that. And, and that's when the light bulb started going off of like, wow, I feel totally out of control and I'm on an anxiety med and a depression med. What if that didn't have to be your reality. What if there could be other tools in your toolbox that you need to just practice more and trust more and have maybe more difficult conversations in the beginning to figure out how you want to show up every day, who you want to spend your time with, where you want to work and how you want that to feel. Because when we're gripping for dear life and we don't see an end in sight, it is totally defeating. And eventually, that's what our kids are looking at, right? That's what um, our, our coworkers are struggling with the same thing. So a few tips that are super simple and effective. Number one, a gratitude journal. It sounds totally woo-woo. Um, but when sometimes in life, we need to just like put our blinders back on and go inward and really focus on listening to what your body is trying to tell you because there's so much noise everywhere. Turn off the news, turn off the radio, um, modify your social media if you're taking on all of that. And, and everybody's taking it on to some degree, but having more boundaries on social media and all the things that could happen right now is imperative. So if you just put your blinders back on, you step back into your body you will be able to hear what it's trying to tell you. If it's quiet, if it's sleep, if it's um, fun with your friends, if it's a like a night getaway, I don't, whatever that is, you need to know because nobody else can choose for you. 
But what happens when we're in the anxious brain or the stress brain, our brain is really like actually imbalanced. So it isn't communicating from left to right. It's definitely not communicating from top to bottom and for sure not from inside out, meaning do you feel connected? If you don't feel connected, we know there's a brain imbalance and we're in overwhelm. So number one is to stop the overwhelm. It's to actually tap the brakes of the car so that your brain can just quiet down. Your body can calm. Your breath can level off and we can start to feel what it feels like to be connected again. So writing what you're grateful for is one of the most basic practices that you can start to bring in. What focusing, and this is not about focusing on just being positive. It truly is changing how your cells are responding. Gratitude is what changes the inside of us. And, and I, I rarely talk about bringing your blinders, like getting rid or putting your blinders on because there's times that we need that to be open so we can see, feel, and now adapt. But if our threshold is so low, which I imagine yours is right now, so many people's is right now, then it's about protecting a bit more. And not protecting as in avoiding conflict or avoiding people or um, or numbing, like drinking wine and sitting in a hot bath for two hours and then going to bed so you can just like not have to deal with anything. It's more about being aware of what you can control and stepping into that decision making power. So when we when we journal about what we're grateful for, it actually changes our brain. It changes our connection. It changes our heart. It changes our gut. Number two, um, breathing also sounds super simple, but if you were just to sit for three minutes and breathe and focus on your breath, take note of your heart rate and your brain waves when you start, and then take note again in two or three minutes, actually even one, you'll probably notice a difference. It typically takes two minutes of a totally different activity to get your brain to respond. So um, even if you feel like you're stuck to do jumping jacks for a minute or two or to do a few burpees or some jump squats, that's going to get the brain to be like, all right, here we go. It's kind of like it's reset. So there are things right now that you are responsible for and only you are responsible for. The number one person I'm seeing right now is the anxious mom and the anxious kids. I, it, it, it's a give and take as to who comes into the office first. And the whole purpose is to get the brain to respond in a calmer way so that you can stay connected. You can handle work. You can handle uh, all these changes in the school. You can handle um, how to make decisions to make things simpler or what to delegate or how, how do we make life more efficient right now. Um, it's to think about what lights you up and how can you get that. You might not be comfortable with big groups of people, but what are some other options that you can close your day out and say, wow, that was an awesome day. I need to create more of this in my day and start to um, feel what you're thinking and feel what you're doing. I know it's safer and more comfortable to not because what you're thinking and what you're doing right now is kind of scary. You feel like you're totally tapped and you just want to check in, like uh, check in, check out, whatever. Check in to numb and check out of your family and your household and all of the responsibilities, but that's not the end game. The end game is how do we get you to handle life better and how do we get you to function better within the chaos of what's happening and so um, whether it's coming into the office and getting your brain evaluated and seeing what is happening in here why I don't want to be on these meds anymore I don't want to rely on that is there another way right is my kid is struggling so much and I don't want to go that route or I can't even get he or she to school, what, what am I supposed to do next? Those are all the things that I can help you with, whether it's you ask me certain questions on email or you come in for a full consult. But there are other things that are easy to create more ease in your life and in your body. 
gratitude journal and breathing are like the simplest honing in on stepping back into who you are because what else I've really seen is um, we're kind of losing it. We're, we're losing our identity in this. So whatever we wanted or what we, um, what made us thrive, let's just say, has been quote taken away from us. And so how do you step into that personal responsibility again and say like, no, this is, I'm going to create a new reality. And what you have right now, what you're dealing with is indirectly what you've chosen to some degree. So um, how to think, how to act, what, how to st what to step into, what to step away from is all under our responsibility, right? It's all what we get to choose. So what if you choose differently? If what you're doing right now isn't working, how about you do something else? Add in those tips and let me know how it goes.